Another species with free reign on the island is this one, the enigmatic red crab. And if you're lucky enough to be here at the beginning of the wet, you're going to meet them in the tens of millions. Their annual migration is one of, if not the, greatest natural spectacle on Earth. The whole event is linked to the last quarter phase of the moon, usually in November or December, for it's triggered by the wet season rains. But when the rain starts, the humidity naturally increases and, and if it keeps raining, they can safely leave their burrows and do their migration to the sea without having to retreat to a moist environment because it is, it is moist. It's just dripping, yeah, <laughs> yeah. literally. Without rain, the journey is impossible, for dehydration would surely set in. Some of them, you know, can walk for up to 18 days. You know, some of them have walked up to nine kilometres. And, and the uncanny thing about the migration is that it's more or less a dead straight line from where they had their burrow in the interior of the island to the coast. So, I mean, they deviate around trees and rocks and things, but essentially they follow a dead straight line to the shoreline. So who leads the masses out of the forest? The males, of course. They're progressively joined by females. Once they reach the shore, they dip, replenishing lost moisture and salts. Then they head back into the shore terrace to prepare for a frenzy of breeding. So the males dig these burrows and then the courtship begins. It can be a fairly rugged affair and then males fight over burrows as well as fighting over ladies. Out of all this mayhem, the crabs mate. Most will mate inside the burrows the males have laboriously fashioned, but others prefer to couple al fresco. Either way, once the deed's done, the females are left to brood their eggs in peace. Twelve to thirteen days after mating, the females emerge from their burrows to dip. Then, just before dawn, on the turn of the high tide during the last quarter of the moon, they release their eggs into the sea. They hatch immediately on contact with the water, 100,000 larvae at a time drifting together to form great clouds that move as one out to sea. So they float around in the sea as zooplankton, little shrimp-like animals. Then they grow through about seven molts in the sea. And then they grow into these uh, little animals that they call megalops. The process takes a month, and during that time, they are vulnerable to predation. But those that do survive come ashore and change into tiny baby crabs. So they turn from a marine animal that breathes air through gills to a land animal that breathes air through lungs. It works out that we only get an island-wide return probably once every 10 years, huh. and that is sufficient apparently to keep the population at a viable level. From beginning to end, Max assures me the spectacle is simply miraculous, an event that he wouldn't dream of missing from one year of service to the next. The scale of it is just spectacular. One of the greatest migrations in the world. It is, it is. It's, uh, it's something to behold, indeed.